Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and another card making video. This is episode one of my May stamp set of the month series featuring the Concord and Ninth stamp set, Painted Peonies. It's a gorgeous floral set. So this month is gonna be very different from my usual scene building cutesy cards. I wanted to do something pretty and beautiful for the month of May, flowers, spring, Mother's Day. So that's what we're doing. Also, Concord and Ninth is sponsoring this month's series and offering a $25 shopping spree for me to give to one of you. All you have to do to enter is comment on all of the videos in this this month series and then on the first Monday in June I will announce the winner. New episodes come out every Tuesday at 8 p.m. so you can check for that and that is Mountain Standard Time. So today I'm going to show you a few different color combinations with the Painted Peony set so you can get an idea of colors to use with this stamp set that is a builder stamp set meaning you're going to take more than one image stamp it on top of each other to create a layered look. So I'll show you that using Concord and Ninth inks, and then you'll get an idea of how to line up these different layers of stamps to create the flowers and leaves in this set. So let's jump right in. Take a close up look here at the Painted Peony stamp set. It's a six by nine set with 19 images and five coordinating dies. Here are the Concord and Ninth mini ink cubes. I am picking out three different color assortments to stamp three flowers today and I will show you how to do that with just two ink pads. The reason why you want three colors is because you're going to stamp three images, three different stamps on top of each other to create one image. This is the first color collection so I'm starting with ballet slippers and this is a super light color. So I am going to double stamp this as I will do with most all of the layers that I stamped today, um, but I won't show that every time. For the second flower, I'm starting with grapefruit ink. This is such a yummy color. I love it, but I will double stamp it. I actually triple stamp it because I did not press very hard in the middle and I have a little hole, so I'll fix that. So this is uh, like building with layers of stamps and uh, that's why you want three colors. But if you only have two, what I like to do is ink up with my lightest color and stamp it off and then stamp it directly onto my paper. So I'm stamping it off on a scratch piece. Then when I stamp it down on my paper, it's a little bit lighter and then I can work with three colors. So now I'm moving on to layer two and referring to my packaging as to the best way to line up these images. Little, What are the little lines I can really look at to line them up? So now I'm coming back in with that same buttercup ink, my lightest color, but I'm not stamping it off this time. I'm stamping it directly on my paper and I will double stamp that, which I didn't do the first time I stamped it because I'm going for that lighter look. For my second flower, this should be sorbet ink. I picked up the wrong ink pad. So um, this is kind of a bonus color uh, combo for you. I <laughs> I realized it right about now and um, I just went with it. I thought we'll see how it looks in the end. So this is the honeysuckle ink again, but on top of the ballet slippers like I originally intended to go with this pink color combination. And the color underneath it does really affect how it turns out when you're laying it, layering it up. So here is the third stamp. This is going to be the stamp with the least amount of surface area. So you're always going to start with the fullest stamp with the most surface area, then go to the one with a little bit less surface area, and then the darkest color you'll stamp with the stamp that has the least amount of surface area. All right, so now for my darkest color on this orange flower, I'm using Poppy. And on the pink one, I used cranberry. It's all on screen if you um, uh, need to go back and look at the color combinations that I used. The darkest color for my yellow flower is stardust. This is a really dark, dark golden yellow. Now for this um, flower that is pink and started with ballet slippers, the pink was so light. So I lined up the solid image again and I stamped right over the top with that ballet slippers two 
I think it was four more times to really intensify that pink color. Now, if you don't get the stamping lined up exactly perfect, don't get too stressed out about it. I didn't. And when you look at my final card with everything put together, it's not horrible. It's not an eyesore. So now for the center of these flowers, there's two stamps to create the center. Um, and I started with that same buttercup ink and I stamped it off for the solid, more solid piece. Then for the detail piece, I didn't stamp it off. And I did that for the pink and the orange flower. On the yellow flower, I'm starting with the stardust ink for my more solid layer. Then for the detailed layer, I'm coming in with wheat ink. And I'm going to stamp that right over the top. And then I'll do it two times because I wanted the center of that flower to really be darker. Now I'm going to bring in the leaves. There are two different leaves in this set. When you stamp these, you're only going to use two different stamps to create your leaf images. So I'm using parsley ink as my lightest color. I'm going to stamp that on the most solid image. Once I get those stamped out, I'll bring in the second layer, the more detailed layer, and I'm going to ink that up with evergreen ink. So I'm making sure my paper is always in that bottom right corner, which is important when you're layering up stamps that you want to have lined up. So we'll stamp that down, and then you can see I have that detailed shadowy look on my leaves. There's also a spray of little buds in this set. You could stamp it like it's a flower. You could stamp it like it's a leaf. I'm using the eggplant ink, stamping it off first, and then I'm stamping over the top of it with the more detailed image. This particular image has two building stamps to create it. So here you can see what it looks like with the, the more detailed stamped over the top with the same color of ink. And there's all of my images stamped out. And I'm, I'm going to die cut these. So there is a die for every image in this set, but there are no dies for the sentiments in this set. And they will all die cut pretty close to the outline with just a little bit of a white border. But one thing I want to point out is that this die set comes already snipped apart. There's no metal pieces you have to cut off. I love that. So there's the images and I really felt like I needed a few more leaves. So I stamped two more of each leaf and that purple spray of flowers. Now I have a slimline panel on some really light blue cardstock. I'm going to stamp this herringbone background panel and I'm using the aqua sky ink and I'm not inking it up really well. I'm not stamping it down really well. I wanted that um, more shabby chic kind of feel for my background. And this is an eight and a half by three and a half panel. Now I want to show you this scraggly paintbrush. This is a set of five I got at the dollar store. I thought these would be great for splattering. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I sprayed my watercolor, my metallic watercolors, and then I picked it up with the brush and I'm using the edge of a window sheet to splatter. And this brush was amazing. I loved it. So those of you that have been looking for a scraggly paintbrush like I use, head over to the Dollar Tree and find this pack of five. You'll love it. All right, it's time to put the card together. I'm using foam mounting tape. This is the second product from the Dollar Tree I'm sharing with you today. I have one more in this video that I love. This foam mounting tape you find in like the home section, not in the craft section. And it is a dollar and it has like 300 of these rectangles. You can cut them they stick really well. I love them. So I popped up my largest flowers and then I'm going to go in and add in my leaves and my smaller flowers and my little spray of flowers here. I will pop up the uh, smaller flowers, those um, that match, and I'm just doing some flower arranging. It's really fun. I love doing this. I did lay them out on my card before committing to adhering them down, which is really helpful. But then sometimes I change it up even after I lay it out and just go with the flow. And I always kind of make sure I like how it's placed before I really press down. Because if I don't press down, I have the opportunity to move it if I feel like I need to. So there are all the flowers arranged and 
Oh my word, I was so happy with how this looks. I love this flower. I don't do a lot of floral things, as you might know if you've watched my channel before, um, but this flower just really jumped out at me from Concord and Ninth. It's from their release in the month of April, and they have new releases every month on the 9th at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Isn't that cool? I love that. All right, so I trimmed off the excess that hung off the edge, and now it's time to pick a sentiment to go on this card. So there are uh, five or six sentiments in this set, and that is good because then you can really customize this to what you want it to be for. I'm going to stamp mine out with mushroom ink, and it says, hello, friend, because then I could use a thank you on the inside, or I could use happy birthday on the inside when I'm ready to send this card you know, it, it makes it more versatile. So I stamped that out a few times to really darken up the color. And then I'm going to bubble cut around this using my scissors. So here I'm showing you this. I usually speed this up really quick, but I just wanted to show you if you turn the paper with your left hand and hold the scissors with your right, it really helps to be able to bubble cut. Now, if you're left-handed, you just do the opposite. So I popped this up and I glued down the side that touched the flower. And then I'm gonna go in with some gem adhesive sticker. They're not stickers, adhesive gems. That's what I mean. And these are gold colored and I'm sticking them in and around all the flowers. I'm using some precision tip tweezers to do that. And I, or because these already have adhesive on the back. I find these tweezers to be the perfect thing, but I also found you kind of want to scoot them off of the backing so they don't lose their adhesive dot. I glued that onto a slimline card that measures eight and a half by seven and scored at three and a half. And now I stamped a little bit of this little flower spray on the inside with that aqua ink. And then I have something interesting on the inside. Now let's make a coordinating gift tag to go with this. Now this is not gonna match exactly. I kind of played around with the colors a little bit, but um, I started out with the same kind of background, that aqua sky on the light blue cardstock. And then I'm gonna stamp my flowers with the original colors I intended to use for my orange flower. So I'm using grapefruit, for my first layer and sorbet for my second layer and poppy for my third. Now onto the leaf, I changed up my lightest color on this one. I started with sprout. Ooh, I love this color too. So pretty. Now for the second layer, I'm bringing in the uh, sorbet ink that I meant to use the first time around. So now you're gonna be able to see the difference between the two flowers. So inking that up on my second layer, the one that has um, a little less surface area, a little more detail, and then I did parsley ink for the second layer of my leaves, which was the lightest color I used last time. All right, now onto the darkest color. Remember, there's no third layer for the leaf, but for the third layer on my flowers, this most detailed layer, I am using poppy. Stamping that down to complete the outside of the flower. And for the inside, I'm gonna use wheat. So I'm doing the part where I stamp it off to make it lighter for my more solid image. Then when I bring in my detailed image, I can just use the uh, wheat ink straight, like solid, not stamped off. So there they are all die cut out. And then I'm gonna cut the corners of this rectangular scrap of cardstock so that it has a tag like shape. And then I will punch a hole with my one fourth of an inch circle punch and stamp a sentiment. I'm set, stamping sending love with wheat ink. And I'm gonna stamp that a few times so that it's really dark and intensified because I'm gonna do some other stamping on the back of this uh, tag as well. So I'm stamping that off, my little spray of flower, stamping it off so that the wheat ink is lighter and creates a really subtle background look. I love it. So this is kind of getting a more rustic feel now that I didn't necessarily intend to go for. It just happened as I was creating and I'm splattering on some gold watercolor for this one and then adding that flower with my foam squares and also the smaller flower with foam squares. So pretty. And then I'm gonna take this wheat stamp or ink again and stamp in this top corner because my third one that I had stamped, I kind of covered up. So I wanted to add a third one back in. Glued my leaves on and then I'll bring in this twine 
that I get from the Dollar Tree. Look how much is there. And it's really fuzzy and rustic. I love it. Also from the Dollar Tree. So there's my three must have Dollar Tree card making supplies. <laughs> the scraggly paintbrush, the foam squares, and the hemp twine. So there are both projects side by side and you can see that middle flower on the card is the one where I did one ink color off from the one on the left. And look how different they are. Oh my word. I love them both though. Okay, so that is the first set of projects for this month's series. Remember to tune in next Tuesday at 8 p.m. for episode two and leave comments on each episode this month so that you can have a chance to win a $25 shopping spree to Concord and Ninth. There will be a total of four episodes. I have all the things I use listed and linked for you below. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe because I have new videos all the time. And I'll see you on the next one. Happy stamping. Bye.